Have you ever found yourself stuck and unsure of how to break through and achieve your goal? Hey there, action takers. It's your friend, David B., along with the articulate Teresa Merrick. And we're back with another episode of the IDK WTF I Was Doing podcast, where we help you create income from your interest by guiding you through that inevitable discomfort that comes with pursuing success. In today's episode, we're going to cover a vital topic that every one of us encounters on our journey getting stuck, and feeling frustrated. We'll be sharing a specific exercise you can use to overcome these obstacles and make significant progress towards your goals. Teresa and I have years of experience tackling these challenges head on, and today we'll be revealing exactly what gets us stuck and frustrated and struggling to break through. We'll also discuss the three essential questions you need to ask yourself to get crystal clear on the next most important step to take. But we won't stop there. We'll also cover the two simple steps anyone can take to massively move forward with action. And the first one is so straightforward, you're going to smack yourself in the forehead because it's so stinking obvious. But it's probably the last thing you'd think to do. And the second is the single most powerful lesson we share on this podcast. So if you've ever struggled with feeling stuck and not knowing how to move forward, be sure to listen to the full episode because we're going to provide you with the tools and insights you need to overcome these challenges and become the best version of yourself. And if this is the kind of thing that tickles your cloaca, hit that subscribe button and let's dive in together on this journey towards personal and financial growth because Teresa and I are your friends and teammates rooting for your success every step of the way. Let's go, action takers. Have you ever started something new and didn't finish it? You were excited. You invested time and money. You got stuck. I'm Teresa Merrick. And I'm David B. And this is the podcast with two ADHD entrepreneurs, and we've been there. And worked with hundreds of people in the exact same place. The IDK WTF I Was Doing podcast will take you away from feelings of frustration and overwhelm. And lead you to the clarity you need to take action and get shit done. Listen today, because it's important to admit that no one really knows what the fuck they're doing. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the IDK WTF podcast. Once again, I am David B. And I'm Teresa Merrick. Welcome, welcome. (laughs) What have we been talking about? What haven't we been talking about? We have this season been talking about how we don't know what the F we're doing, and neither do you. And it's okay. We've talked about setbacks. We've talked about how to take action and how to create routines and how to get grounded and get present when you're feeling stressed out. And so we have come to this part of our season three. And David, what are we talking about today? Absolutely. So today we're going to be talking about really figuring out the right next step and exactly how to get there. Because just like you said, we've talked about, you know, how to get into a good mental state where we can start really making progress. Because once we get out of that stress state, which you just helped us with in the last episode, then we can really start making active steps forward. What I used to feel was, you know, when looking to do something new or make a big change, if I didn't know where to start or what to do next, I would just give up. Or if I hit like this big roadblock and couldn't figure out like the things to do, I would just quit or I would find myself going to go do something else and not stick with stick with the plan that I had laid out. Mm -hmm. And even like with this podcast, too, it's the same kind of thing. I feel like we're also at that place where it's like getting harder every day because it's growing and we're like making more progress. And it's like really sticking with that commitment of, okay, let's get the next episode. Let's keep doing this. Let's keep going with the uncomfortable next steps now that we've got the routine established, right? Absolutely. It's definitely something that it can feel overwhelming at times because it's, oh, now there's a lot more stuff to do. And we were getting comfortable. But if you want to grow, if you want to create something different than what you already have, that's what it takes. And I think that most of the time, even once you have something successful that you're enjoying, there can be that like stagnant feeling where you're like, okay, it's good, but like I see more. There's something or a shift I want to make or a new direction I want to take. And that's for a lot of us is always evolving and changing. So it's not something that really ever goes away. So it's like 
It's all about the journey. It's actually really funny because my sign says enjoy the journey. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Enjoy your journey. But because that's that's what it's about. Like there we will never arrive. I mean, maybe some people feel like they have. And if they're content, I mean they are, but I think a lot of us don't reach that point. When we get to the point where we're like, oh, I should feel content. You're happy to where you're at, but then you're like, okay, what's next? I'm content that I made it here, but let's go to the next. So it's a, it's a constant being uncomfortable in creating something new, whatever that might actually look like for your life. Yeah. And a lot of you may know that I started in the retail world and I worked retail forever. I was in retail management and that's was very consistent. I would wake up, I would go to work. I had to work a lot of hours to make sure everything got done but I knew what needed to be done. They would send me the planograms and the stuff for each month. So it's like I was very set in a routine and I knew what was going to happen every single day. And it was also at a point, right, where being in retail, I didn't think I had any skills that could transfer into other industries. So it's like, you know, I'm a retail manager, but what, what other kind of job does I possibly get? And what do I know about business? I don't know anything. And so I really had to make a choice one day of, I would, I, everyone hates retail when you're working in it, we hate it, but it's consistent, right? When it's, it's reliable. Yeah. So doing something new was so dramatically different that it was scary and that it was hard. And it was like, there was so much I didn't even know I didn't know. And so that's what we're going to be covering and after the break. I'm going to give you guys some very specific questions to ask and specific ways to go do that. I get super excited. Because I have, I mean, I have all these ideas and all these aspirations. It's like in, in my mind, I'm like excited. And, and then I'm like, wait, and I get overwhelmed and bogged down is usually what happens. And so then I have to like stop myself and go, OK, hold on. Before you get like into this depressed state where you're like, no, I'm going to watch Netflix. <laughs> Bye. It's it's this state of overwhelm that I get in because I get excited. But then I'm like, oh, shit. I don't know how it's going to look. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Do I even want to do it? And then it's like, sometimes it's like, no, I don't. I'm cool with where I'm at. And like, I want to go in this direction with something different because that's how many different ideas I have all the time. Don't know if it's just being an entrepreneur or being ADHD or all of the above. Or a combination of two. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, I, I'm like, how many, how many directions can I go? And then I'm like, Ooh, what about this? And actually, it causes me to freeze a lot because even if it's like, hey, where do you, we want to go out to dinner tonight? Where do you want to go? I'm like, well, we could go here and then I could eat that. But then what about this? But then what about that? Will I have leftovers? Well, maybe we should make dinner. I mean, this is how my brain works. So I tend to get very overwhelmed if I don't hone it down to like a direction. Okay. Because once I can like hone it down and go, okay, yes, there are an infinite number of possibilities at any given moment, any given moment about anything. I have to let go of that because that's, I, and then I can be excited about starting, but I have to let go of that in order to not be super overwhelmed. And even then, even if I narrow it down and I'm like one direction, I'm like, okay, IDK WTF podcast, let's go. There's an infinite number of possibilities. Yeah. So it can just be, it can be overwhelming and stressful and cause me to get really stopped and go, I don't know. I don't know what to do. So that's yeah. probably my biggest obstacle is that yeah. overwhelm and then feeling frozen because of it. I, definitely. And I see that with a lot of my clients and like other like new startup entrepreneurs as well, when they're like starting to make a course or turn their hobby into a, into a business. It's they get really excited at the beginning and then the actual business part starts because they're really passionate about like the thing that they're passionate about their topic. And then the business stuff is hard and it will not necessarily hard, but just dramatically different. Yeah. And because it's so different, it causes that feeling of overwhelm and frustration and freezing. Well, yeah. And if you don't know how to do what you're doing either, because a lot of times that's what I run into is that I'm excited to do something, but then I'm not sure because there might be 10 different good ways to do it, or ways that experts say to do it. So then it's, I don't even know what the right way is, whatever that means. Yeah. And it's it. amazing because that's it's like the opposite problem now that there was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, it was like, okay, where do I find how to do the next thing? And now it's, there's a million gurus that are like, here's the 
best way for to do this and they all have the best way and it's all different i mean let's be real you can go to ai and say what's the best way to do this and ai can give you 25 different ways that's exactly the best way. so it's it's yeah it's too many options too yeah. many different ways to do it and likely even if there's not infinite ways that are the right ways there's really three to five really good ways to go about doing something that work yeah and what I, yeah, what I often say is most of they they'll all work. You just have to pick one and do it. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. If you just do what they say, it'll work, right? Right. Um, but it's getting to that point. Um, totally. So I think why don't we take a break and then right after the break we'll go through the exact process of the right questions to ask to get to the exact right next step. I need those. I need those questions, <laughs> David. Even when I know them already, I need them. So I can't wait. <laughs> Do it we'll be right back. <laughs> Have you ever started something new that you were really excited about and invested time or money into, but after doing it for a while, you reach a point and you just feel like, I have no idea what the F I'm doing. There's that bubbling up of frustration because you're not quite as good as you thought you'd be or it's nowhere near as easy as you expected. Then suddenly a wave of guilt comes at the same time and you don't really want to or feel like you can express this to anyone. Having a dream you want to accomplish can be very sad and isolating. It's lonely because visionaries tend to see the world the way that it could be instead of settling for the way the world currently is, like most people do. We believe this so deeply that we wrote a book with the exact four steps to help. This guide is designed to take you out of that feeling of frustration and overwhelm and lead you into the calmness and clarity that you need to reach the life that you know in your heart you're destined to have. If you've started a project or a goal, but have stopped, gotten stuck, or are starting to feel burned out, this is 100% the book for you. Go to idkwtfpodcast.com today and download your digital copy with the coupon code ACTION to get it on us because we want to join you and be your supportive friends and partners throughout your journey. It's only free for a limited time if you use the code ACTION by going to our website, idkwtfpodcast.com. Check it out today and let's get unstuck together. We are back from our break and I'm excited because David is about to tell us the questions that we need to ask ourselves to get ourselves from that place where we're like stuck and feeling a little overwhelmed and not sure how to go about figuring out the next step. David, what's the first question? What do we do? Perfect. Yes. And so this is actually something I do in my mastermind group as well. So I'll run everyone kind of through this exact this exact process. But the first step is always to just write down what you're working on. And because a lot of times we're working on a lot of different things. And so we have all these different ideas in our head. So just writing down the one thing, the one next step that I'm working on. So is it is it I need to create my course? Is it I need to set up a website? Is it Am I turning my crochet passion into crochet lessons or am I turning like my cooking hobby into a cooking business? What am, what is it that I'm working on right now? It sounds simple, but so many people don't even start there, you know? Well, it sounds simple, but if we use our podcast as an example, it's like there's marketing, there's figuring out what, you know, what our next episodes, what are we going to record? What are we going to talk about? Are we doing another event? Are we going to write another book? There's so many ways we can go, directions we can go. But absolutely, I think it would be helpful if it's like, okay, today, what am I working on right now? Yep. Perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. So step one, what am I working on? Step two, what's going well for me? And this is the other thing that people just often forget when they're, especially when they're getting to that stressed, burned out place, they start to catastrophize and they're like, everything is going wrong. I don't know what I'm doing what's going on right right um, so if we just write down what's going well and we start to get back in that positive place right and if you're stuck there go back to our last episode where we talked about doing a grounding exercise i walked you through it so go back and do your grounding exercise and then say what's going well for me if you can't find anything that's going well for you because something is i promise right but yes Otherwise, okay be there right right absolutely if you're sitting here having these thoughts and you're even trying to do this process you're doing something right. Yeah. Okay, great. So then you want to check on what's going well for me. Yep. And then the third thing is then to ask, what do I need help with? Ooh. And then it's okay, because once you know where you are, you know what's going well, then it's okay. What do I need help with? Is it that I just don't understand social media? Is it that 
it's really hard to think of emails to write my client base or is that I don't have a website yet or how do I get clients? So what's the one thing you need help with? And so once you figure that out, we'll go into the next steps on how to fix that. But finding that one, the one key of what you need help with is paramount because so many times we want to be working on 10 different things instead of the one most important next thing. Yeah, because my baseboards need to be cleaned because I'm distracting myself from the one thing I should be doing right now or I want to be doing even not if you take the word should out. And I think being able to admit that you need help is important yes. or that you need to, you need to gather information from a source other than yourself to get something done. Yeah, I think that's really, really great. Okay, so I'm going to write down what I'm working on. I'm going to write down what's going well for me in that area. And then I'm going to write down what do I like need help with? Where am I stopped and not? I, I need something to move forward that I'm, I don't have myself. Exactly, exactly. Okay, perfect. So now what, once we have that one thing we need help with, and it might be multiple things, but having it written down is, is just dramatically more helpful. Now is the time to get resourceful. And so Tony Robbins always says it's not about having a lack of resources. It's about having a lack of resourcefulness. Mm -hmm. And because we don't necessarily need money to make our business work. We think we do, but we don't. Tons of people are doing this for very cheap. And that's what I specialize in is showing people how to do this with almost no money. Right. Yes, he's um, really good at it. That's how I set up my initial coaching business a couple of years ago. So he's not joking. He's got the best resources. <laughs> so then it's time to figure out, okay, so I've got the one thing I need help with, which is I've got my, I know that I want to teach cooking lessons, right? So I'm really good. I've got my recipes. I know how I'm going to teach it. So now I just need to find people. That's the one thing. How do I find potential clients? Right. Yeah. So then the question, the first thing to do is, and this is the one that cracks me up because I do it all of the time and all of my clients do it. And it's just so easy. But the first thing to think of is what have I already purchased that has the answer? Because we've all got courses, we've all got books, we've all got all these trainings. Many of us that we haven't finished them spent thousands of dollars on, on training. Can I just go open that training to answer the question? taught by the best people in the world, right? Or how many trainings have I purchased that I finished that I took notes on, but then I didn't go back and like reread my own notes saying what stood out to me about this training. Even if I don't have time, if I don't want to sit and watch a three-hour training, I go look at my notes I took on the three-hour training and get a ton of refreshers. Yeah, exactly. that's it's yeah. funny. Yeah, there's absolutely, there's things now that I'm like, oh, I really should pull open that training I never finished. Yeah. Yeah. So use it. We bought it. We signed up. We have it. It's downloaded somewhere. So go look at that. And if that doesn't have the answer, and I never recommend go buy a new workshop or buy a new course. That's like the one thing I tell everyone is to stop buying stuff, especially when they're working with me already, right? It's like, you don't need to buy anything else ever again. Stop signing up for workshops. Stop signing up for these free things. You already have all of the knowledge. It's time to put it into action. Is and and I for me that would also be a way of hiding behind like Netflix. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go watch this movie marathon. I'm gonna yep. go take this course before I take action on this thing that I probably don't need to go buy this course to take action on. Exactly. Exactly. And that it feels like progress because it's oh no this is good for me. It's I'm learning something. But it's really procrastination because it's not doing the work that's going to lead you to the end, right? Yes. So you get that nail on the head. Yes. And I love this. And what I want to say, because you brought up the perfect, you brought up the P word, procrastination. <laughs> Don't feel guilty if you procrastinate. It is actually a, like a form of self-preservation. It is a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that for a long time. And I used to think I'm just lazy. I'm just avoidant. That's not the case. It's a coping mechanism. So if you procrastinate in any of these ways, don't be hard on yourself. We've talked about this before, but I'm just going to reiterate it right here. So yeah. if it just so happens you don't already have a course or a workshop that you've already purchased, then it's time to figure out who do I know that has been through this or done something similar? So is it a friend that you have, a member of a Facebook group that you're a part of? Are you in the community or a mastermind group or a networking group? Do you have a... a connection on social media that maybe you've never talked to them, but you see them posting stuff all the time, similar to what you're working on. 
Mm -hmm. Because now that you know exactly what you want to work on, how do I get clients or how do I set up a website? So now it's time to find either the course that has it or someone who can just walk you through it. We'd probably be more than happy to just let you know some quick and easy tips on that. I am that person who's like, I will go to the next thing and be like, oh, what can I sign up for? Maybe I need to go back to school and get a master's. Maybe I need to do this $2,000 course. Maybe I need to do this $200 course. And not to say you should never take another course again, ever. That's not the point of this. The point is, usually when you're stopped somewhere, you already have some sort of resources at your fingertips, exactly. at your disposal, that you've read already, that you've listened to already, or someone that you know who you can just go to lunch, have coffee, pick their brain. Yeah. You're like, hey, can Absolutely. I buy you a coffee? And I want to talk about this thing that mm -hmm. I think you could help me with. And most people will be like, sure, I'm down. You don't have to buy me the so coffee. Funny. I'll come. I'll come meet you. Let's do it. And most of us, are, we're like happy to talk about it. I was just listening to a podcast where uh, Mr. Beast was being interviewed and mm -hmm. many might not know him, but Mr. Beast is the number one YouTuber like ever. And he makes more money from YouTube than anyone ever has. And he was saying like he was asked, he's, have you created like a course or to teach other people how to do it? And he was like, no, I just talk about it all the time because this is my life and this is what I love doing. He's like, I probably should charge to teach it, but I'm just going to tell you because I just like it. <laughs> right. And so there's yeah, someone who's super successful. He wants to share it. All right. Awesome. I love all of this, David. So will you recap this for us? Yep. If you do want to see it, it is again in chapter three of our IDK WTF book that you can get right on our website and easy. So it's all written out in chapter three. But for you, all of the steps once again. So number one, what am I working on? Number two, what's going well for me? Number three, what do I need help with? And then the question below that is what have I already purchased that would have the answer? Or who do I know who has been through this or something similar? Awesome. It's actually really, really simple. Simple, straightforward. But it's the simple things to me that do the most for us. Yeah, they give us the most bang for a buck. Hey, take a piece of paper, write down the answers to these questions, and then you have a format to take action. Absolutely. And if you don't know someone directly, we're actually going to talk about on our next episode how to find a good mastermind group or how to find people to be like your accountability partners. So we're going to give you some simple, because it's easy to say, like, just go find someone. But it's not always that easy because it's it not intuitive. Work. Yeah. So that's what we're going to cover next week. So stay yes. tuned for that episode. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Have an right. awesome rest of your day. Good to Bye. see you. And we will see you soon. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed today's conversation, please consider liking, subscribing, and or reviewing us on wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, if there's someone you know who clearly doesn't know what the fuck they're doing and would benefit from this topic, please hit that share button and send them this episode. Let's normalize the feeling of uncertainty. Asking for help and admitting that we don't know what the fuck we're doing either. either.